Welcome to CSIT 311. The course is Information Security Principles. And this is session one. We'll be looking at Introduction to Information Security. I'm Prince Wachi Setrehine, and I'll be taking you on this course. OK, so as an overview, in this session, we'll be looking at the many information security practitioners and how, how they recognize that information security needs with business objectives and how this must be top priority for most management. We'll also be looking at the meaning of information security in an enterprise and the definitions that lie in there concerning what information security is all about with regards to a business. Before we begin studying the details of the discipline of information security, in this session we'll look at certain concepts that will help us to know first of all the history and the evolution of the field, then introduce us to information security itself. As an outline, we shall handle this session in this regard. We'll look at first of all the history of information security, then we'll look at what security itself is. Then we'll come across the Committee on National Security Systems and what they are about and what role they play in information security. We'll then move on to look at a component of an inf information system. Then further on, look at balancing information security and access. We'll end the session looking at the approaches to information security implementation. The text recommended for this session can be found in the recommended text, chapter one of Principles of Information, as you have. So let's start off with the history of information security. Now, information security began as um, computer security, which all started during the first, the Second World War, where security was needed in exchanging of codes. So you hear about code breaking computations during the Second World War. You hear about multi multi level of security and being implemented. You hear about physical controls and so on and so forth. This was the revolution that birthed information security, but previously the concern was on securing computer systems which was used for communication during the Second World War. Now, in that regard, you come to hear of something known as MOTIX. MOTIX simply means Multiplexed Information and Computing Systems. Now, this was an early research focus which was funded by the Department of Defense the United States, which was seeking to be able to understand security of computing systems. So from the 1960s there on all up to present, research has been ongoing and it is geared from computing systems and now it is more of information security and how to be able to secure the information which is named the information age that we find ourselves in. Okay, what is security? Since we are so keen on knowing what information security is, we want to understand first and foremost what security itself is. We would want to say that when you are free from danger or you're in a safe place, you can say you are secure. So as a general definition, you can say that the quality or state of being secure is what we can term security as far as this course is concerned. Now, it is important to note that to have a successful organization, there should be a multi-level layer of security that must be in place. First and foremost, we, you should look at physical security, which has to do with the equipment that you have, the computer systems, and so on and so forth, that an organization uses to be able to go about its day-to-day -day operations. You want to look at personal security, being able to protect the individuals or the group of people who are working within the organization. Another point of security is operation security, which deals with being able to protect the operations, the activities, the stages that an organization uses to run its business. Then we'll look at communication security. That has to do with how the 
company organization is able to transact business and talk to other departments or organizations outside its business itself. Then we'll look at network security. With network security, we're looking at being able to secure the networks that you use, your routers, your switches, how information is packed on, the packets you're sending, and so on and so forth. So this is also another point of security that an organization needs to be very careful about. Then finally, information security itself. What then is information security? Information security simply is the protection of information and its critical elements, including systems and hardware that use, store, and transmit that information. To be able to do that, there are certain necessary tools that must be looked at. First of all is policy. Then we look at awareness, training, education, and technology. You would realize here that policy, awareness, training, education, and technology are being named as necessary tools. Yes, because as a business, your concern is not just with the physical tools that you're using, like the computers and the routers, but also the policies that management has put in place to be able to help secure how information within that organization is moved around. And also to be able to create an awareness to the persons or the individuals or groups of individuals within the organization. You are mindful of running proper training to your staff as to the kind of things they can move around based on their access level so that no one just sends any sort of information out of the company or to exchange with the colleagues in the company. Then finally, education. You need to educate your people, especially on the technology that are being used, so that you don't find your own staff or workers within the organization being the ones who are going to mishandle the information that you are using for your business. In all of this information security definition and its necessary tools, we'll come across the industry standard, which we know popularly as the CIA, which is the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Okay, let's now look at certain key information security concepts. Under information security, what are some of the concepts that we need to concern ourselves with? We'll come across concepts such as access, being able to have the data or information that we are working available to us. We'll look at, you'll hear another concept that is asset. Asset has to do with the physical equipment itself that we are using for our day-to-day -day transactions. We'll look at the concept of attack. Yes, we're talking about information security, so we need to be mindful of the fact that an attack is possible, for which reason we need to secure what we are doing. We'll look at control, safeguard, and countermeasures, all of these which are supposed to be put in place to be able to allow for prevention and possible curbing of an attack for in the case where it occurs. Okay, we'll come across other concepts which I'll run through briefly. You hear something about exploit, exposure, loss, protection, profile, or secure poster, risk, subject, and object. You hear about threat. We'll talk about threat agents and vulnerability. All of these are concepts that will come across in the entire span of the course. So these are just to highlight them for you to be aware of. Okay, moving on, key information security concepts that are going to be added to what we have just gone through is first of all, considering that a computer can be subject of an attack. When we say a computer is the subject of an attack, it means that the computer tool itself is what is going to be used to carry out the attack. The another concept that exists therein is when the computer is the entity being attacked. When you have the computer being attacked, then at that point, the computer becomes the object. So there are two concepts here. We have the computer as the subject of the attack, then we have the computer as the object of the attack. Okay, there are certain critical characteristics of information that we want to look at. Under critical characteristics of information, we want to note that the value of information comes from so many features or characteristics which it could possess. First and foremost has to do with the information's availability. Is the information available to the persons who are 
authorized to be able to have access to the information. Another characteristic is accuracy. The information that is being accessed by those authorized persons, okay. is it correct? Does this have the, the needed detail? Is it not corrupt? Now, is it authentic? It's another characteristic that you'll be looking for. Then we'll look at confidentiality, the integrity of the information, the utility, then finally the possession of that information. So in addition to the key features, these are critical characteristics of information that is worth noting. Then you might have come across CNSS, which for meaning is Committee on National Security Systems. What happens is that this is a body that puts together the documents that governs what information security is all about. So at any point in time, when a committee is set up and they come out with a new document, which usually is a revision of an old one and adding on to an updated technology, the, the name of the committee is used as the new name of the new policy that has been rolled out. But currently, the latest committee that worked on the security document policy, which is being accepted worldwide, is known as the Committee on National Security Systems, the CNSS. Okay, so moving from that, as an introduction to information security, we want to look at components of an information system. What are the components of an information system? Information system is an entire set of components. It's not just about the hardware, physical hardware like a PC, a laptop, a computer, but the component of an information system constitutes of the software, the hardware, the data, the people themselves who are going to use that computer system and their software, the procedures, the steps that lies in, in the operation of the organization with regards to information, and also the networks that are within the organization which is used for business exchange. These all come together to form the components of an information system. Okay, now that we know that the information system component is not just the hardware and it comprises of software, data, etc., etc., another critical thing we would want to look at as an introduction to information security has to do with balancing information security and access. How are we going to be able to balance information security and its access? If you're going to secure information because you think that it's going to be vulnerable to an attack, how are you going to, what measures are you going to put in place to make sure that it is still accessible to the right kind of people? So in doing that, we want to have this in mind. First and foremost, that information is impossible to obtain perfect security as far as information is concerned. If you're looking for a system which is perfectly secure, it doesn't exist. But instead, it, it is to be noted that security is a process. So you run at getting to a perfect secure system, but you will never be able to come to an absolute perfection in trying to secure information. This is a fact that you need to come to realization on. Because there isn't any system that is totally secure, even with the most difficult of encryption technologies that have been used. The experts will tell you that it is, only, it is only secure because the computation power that is needed to break them is longer than expected than any technology that exists can do. It means that as technology increases, we'll have computation power that can run faster than what is existing to be able to break them. This is only an example to tell you that indeed information is not absolute with its sec secureness. It can be breached and that is a process. Another thing that we want to look at when you're looking at balancing information security and its access is that security should be considered the balance between the protection and the availability. What does that mean? To be able to say something is secure is to say that when the authorized person has need to access that information, it is made available to them and no other person. It means that it is secure only to the person who has been given access to it. So I'll take that again. Security should be considered the balance between protection and availability. So you can encrypt a lot of things, but make sure that when the right person who is authorized to have access to it needs it, they're able to access it and use it for whatever their business is. If that is done, then you can say you have balanced information 
protection and the availability of that information. You must also realize that in balancing information security and its access, we must allow reasonable access yet protect against threats. As much as we are trying to balance the protection and the availability, you must also make sure that we have reasonable access given to authorized persons. Okay, now what approaches to information security implementation are there? There are majorly two approaches. We have the bottom-up approach, then we have the top-down approach. We'll look at the bottom-up approach first. With the bottom-up approach, that is where we have the grassroots efforts. You find most systems administrators driving such an approach. The good thing about it is that you get the technical expertise of the individual administrators being considered in driving such an implementation. We realize often that this does not really work. Why? Because most policies are not implemented or put together by those administrators on that managerial level. It is usually on a higher management level. So you hardly get participant support when the administrators are trying to drive this implementation and they don't have enough power in the organization to be able to enforce such implementation. So that's the downside to that approach. On the other side, you realize that on the top-down approach, which usually has the initiation by upper management, who issue policies, they determine the procedures and the processes. They dictate the goals and the expected outcomes of the project and so on and so forth. It is usually most successful because they have the power to drive the policies within the organizations and when they have laid down the security information principles for implementation, it usually works better. So you find most organizations using the top-down approach when it comes to implementing information security. In doing this, most systems adapt the system's development life cycle. What is this system development life cycle all about? It is the usual life cycle which encompasses the methods for designing and implementation of information systems. So there are certain formal approaches to problem solving, there are certain structured sequences of procedures that are used. And most organizations who have adapted the system's development life cycle usually go about this approach in implementing and enforcing their information security approaches. Now, this system development life cycle has had a step on which is now called the security systems development life cycle. In actual fact, it's the same phases that is used in the traditional system development life cycle. And this time, there's the need to adapt to support implementation of the information security project. And also to identify the specific threats and create controls to counter them. So the security system development life cycle is just following the same process as the systems development life cycle. Okay, moving on from that as an introduction, we want to look at what an information security project team is all about. When we talk about an information security project team, it comprises usually of the promoter, who is usually called the champion, then we have a team leader who usually has managerial or line management capability. Then we'll look at the security policy developers, then you have on that team the risk assessment specialist. You also have security professionals, systems administrators. Then the end users, those who are going to make use of the system. So in every organization and every business, whenever an information security team is built, you would come to realize that persons within these stated positions are found on the team to be able to allow that team to function properly. In this session, there's a concept that is usually argued as to whether information security is a science or is an art. Now, we want to know that implementation of information security is often described as a combination of both information security as an art and a science. In subsequent sessions, we will come to find out why it is considered a combination of both of them. With this, we bring an end to the session of introduction to information security. Thank you.